Hello friends and welcome to the channel. In this entry we'll be taking a look at the character of Robert McCall from the 2014 movie The Equalizer. The film presents the oppressor versus the oppressed dichotomy in society. The oppressed are exploited for monetary gains by a Russian criminal organization headed by Vladimir Pushkin. Robert McCall takes it upon himself to help them get justice. This choice introduces a moral conflict. Helping them is a noble thing to do, but that will also mean breaking the law. He has to take a moral stance and this will demand the resurrection of his past. McCall is the protagonist of the movie. His actions are central to the plot of the story. His identity is shaped by his present and mysterious past life. In his present life, he is a lonely widower who works in Home Mart, a hardware store. In his other life, he is a government operative who has faked his death through a car bombing just to be born anew. There is an air of mystery surrounding McCall's character. That is why his co-workers, Marcus and Jay, argue over what he used to do for a living. They see him as a gentleman who must have been in the corporate world, either in insurance or Wall Street. In response, McCall tells them that he used to be a pip. This, however, doesn't shake off this mysteriousness. Perfectionism is the first trait you will notice in McCall's character. His passion for orderliness and perfection can be mistaken for an obsessive compulsive disorder. He has this constant urge to organize things to suit a particular standard, even when he is not in his own personal space. Whenever he goes to the bridge diner as part of his daily routine, we see the way he arranges his book and the dinner cutleries with precision. Being in dangerous territory doesn't deter him from exhibiting these perfectionist traits. On getting to Slave's office, a Russian pimp, to talk to him about Alina, a young sex worker who McCall has befriended in the diner, he arranges the skull artifacts on his table to align in a particular way before pretending to leave. This move surprises Slavi and his men. In addition, McCall is detail-oriented. He is obsessed with keeping the schedules and observing things down to the tiniest of details. He times everything he does, even when doing the dishes. This meticulousness is applied when killing people. Before taking on Slave's men, he surveys everything in the office, including the accessories on the men's bodies and their tattoos. He predicts that it is going to take him 16 seconds to kill them. He starts the timer and begins counting out loud some incoherent figures before attacking them. Similarly, during the robbery incident at Home Mart by a lone gunman, he takes note of all the things in his body from his hat to his tattoos. But because a child has walked in with his mother, he stops himself from attacking him so as to save the child from witnessing a traumatic incident. Instead, he follows the robber outside to note his car number plate. Afterward, he is able to trace and kill him. McCall's actions and attention to detail while killing raise a question about his past life. It takes him only 19 seconds to kill Slave and his five men. These are trained mafia thugs. Slave, while lying in a pool of his blood, asks him who he is. In response to Slave's question, he starts mouthing the incoherent figures again. This further shrouds a veil of secrecy over his identity. However, it is glaring that McCall is compassionate. This takes him on a mission to save Alina, a stranger he barely knows. After Slave's refusal to accept $9,800 as the price of her freedom, he decides to kill him to save her from the misery. His actions open up a Pandora's box, making him Pushkin's number one enemy. Also, seeing how emotionally attached Jenny, his co-worker, is to her mother's ring, which the armed robber has stolen, he decides to take it upon himself to trace him and return the ring to her. Similarly, he is kind-hearted. This is evident in the effort he exerts into helping Ralphie, his colleague, meet his weight requirement, which will land him a role as a security man in Home Mart. Even when Ralphie tries to backslide by eating junk, McCall calls him back to order. He also helps him during his workout exercises. In the end, Ralphie passes his test. Despite getting the job, 
Ralphie resigns to help his mother in her business place, which escaped being burnt down, by Raymar and Peterson, the police detectives under Pushkin's payroll. McCall goes to seek him out and offers to help him clean up. Later, he realizes that the fire is not an accident, but the work of the rogue police detectives. He obtains a recording of them threatening Ralphie's mother and promises to expose it if they don't return all the money they have extorted from the people in the neighborhood. The detectives have no choice but to obey his order. McCall inherited his combat and killing skills from his time as a government agent. He seems to be one of the best in his job as he is not easily eliminated. When he goes to visit Susan, a retired government operative, her husband Brian tells him that when the wife received the news of his death, she says she doesn't believe he can die from something as ordinary as a car bombing. This is to show that McCall is skilled in repelling any form of attack. In addition, his killing of the very powerful Pushkin, who is heavily protected by armed guards, lends credence to his training. He goes to his Moscow residence, penetrates his tight security, kills them, and ends up causing Pushkin to electrocute himself. We also witness this in the way he finishes off Teddy Pushkin's right-hand man and his men who are armed to the teeth while rescuing his colleagues who have been taken hostage. His meticulous attention to detail has been developed from his former career because he is always 1,000 steps ahead. The diner is usually visited by power line workers. Therefore, when Teddy sends in one of his men to disguise as an ordinary power line worker to kidnap him, he is able to spot that he isn't one of the workers by merely looking at him. He eliminates this man and escapes from the trap Teddy has set for him. McCall is driven by the need to be a better person. This must have been motivated by his late wife, Vivian. She has a strong influence on him, even in death. He turns into a bookworm because of her influence. He opens up to Alina that he emulated her love for books. Vivian, before her death, had a goal to read a hundred books, but she read only 97 books. McCall, who has read 91 books, hopes to make it to a hundred books so that when they finally meet in the afterlife, they can have something to talk about. Equally, he is motivated to help people be a better version of themselves. He encourages Alina to pursue her music career and tries to get her to drop refined sugar so as not to ruin her vocal cords. He further encourages her to change her world. We also see this in the way he helps Ralphie to achieve his weight loss goal like he would his own son. When Ralphie tries to give up during their workout session, McCall tells him not to doubt himself because doubt kills. Even in death, he strives to keep to the promises he has made to Vivian and to put an end to his life as a killer. He makes this promise known to Teddy. However, he tells him that if Pushkin refuses to shut down his illegal operations all over the country, he is going to make an exception by destroying them. This also reminds us that when Slavi breathed his last, McCall mutters, I am sorry, to himself. This can be seen to be an apology to his wife for breaking his promise to her. Although we can glean from this that his wife has never been in support of his killing spree, she's in love with the other side of him that derives pleasure from helping the helpless. When Susan poses a question to him on why he is helping Alina, he doesn't have a tangible answer. Susan reminds him that it is because it is who he is. She lets him know that even though a part of him has died with Vivian, she knows the compassionate side of him is still alive. Therefore, she permits him to go be that part Vivian loves by fighting for Alina. McCall is moved by the need to uphold justice. In fact, all his actions in the movie point in this direction. His warring with the Russian Mafia is motivated by his need to free Alina and other victims of their criminal activities. His attack on Raymar and Peterson is to get them to do the right thing. He reminds them of their job as law enforcement agents to uphold the law by getting them to make restitution to all the people they have extorted. Also, his passion to restore order in society takes him on a mission to cripple Pushkin's operation. He pressures Detective Frank Masters, another policeman under Pushkin's payroll, to turn himself in as well as hand over the details of Pushkin's operation in his deposit box. 
Bacall sends the evidence to Mosley, an FBI agent. When he gets to one of Pushkin's front companies, he frees all the Mexican women working there and hands them bundles of cash. He also ties up Pushkin's men and leaves loads of cash to be discovered by the police without taking a penny. McCall's philosophy constitutes the principle of second chances. Throughout the movie, he gives the bad guys a choice to change or die. Before Slavi's expiration, he reminds him that he has missed the chance to save his life by taking the money. During his encounter with Raymar and Peterson, instead of killing them, he decides to give them a choice to return the money collected from their victims or risk being exposed. In addition, he spares Detective Master's life. He gives him a second chance to turn himself in and hand over everything that he has that can nail Pushkin. This, he believes, should be his opportunity to do the right thing. He also tells Teddy to get Pushkin to shut down all of his operations, otherwise he wouldn't stop until he destroys everything and kills everyone connected to them. Pushkin instead continues to haunt him through Teddy for destroying his businesses. This leads him to go through his threats as he kills Teddy and Pushkin in the end and grounds their operation. McCall takes up the role of a vigilante, the equalizer he calls himself. His method even though it is unethical, is the only choice available when the people charged with upholding the law are also among those perpetuating a system that oppresses the helpless. Taking law into his own hands is the only way he feels the oppressor can free his victims. These actions present a moral pluralism in the mind of the audience, eliminating the Russian criminals, killing the robber, and torturing the detectives are all against the law. However, they are a means to an end. Susan puts it succinctly as she tells him that sometimes you can make the wrong choices while trying to get to the right place. To sum up, the moral conflict facing McCall is whether to obey the law or help the oppressed. His choice of the latter turns him into a real-life superhero, the knight in shining armor, who has brought stability into the life of a helpless young girl. And for him, this fulfilling end justifies the means. So what do you think of Robert McCall, folks? Let me know in the comments below.